Hello everyone and welcome back to the Concord in X-Plane 11. This is the Kolimata Concord, a payware plane that has been recently updated. I noticed that a lot of people were watching the old video where I uh, went through the star procedure and flew it across the Atlantic and I decided that I should make an updated version out of somewhat out of guilt because the video I had made before didn't reflect all the changes that have occurred and I didn't want people to get the wrong impression of the plane. In particular, going back into the cockpit, um, the flight engineer panel is now more complete. It has the dials and everything. It's looking spiffy. And so I wanted to make sure that the startup procedure reflected how it looks now. And I also wanted to fly it across country just to see how fast it could do that. I recently saw a tweet that uh, noted that the SR-71 did it in an hour and four minutes. Now, of course, in real life, the Concorde didn't go supersonic across ground uh, and couldn't have made a record like that, but I decided that we should make up for that in X-Plane 11, so we are going to do that. Uh, so yes, the startup procedure. I also got some questions on the previous videos about how to do things, like um, how to add a flight plan. Well, that's all under here, flight preparation, waypoint entry, and so I've got SFO in there right now, and you could just uh, change which waypoint, and we're gonna go to JFK. So I'm just going to insert that into the flight plan, and there we go. It's got the flight plan, it's got the distance of 2,241 nautical miles, our heading. Now, of course, if you wanted interim waypoints, you could add those in. Uh, if uh, There are websites where you could build up a flight plan, and uh, you can see the flight plan listed here already, all done for you, just because I just put in the departure airport and arrival airport, and we've got all these things. But uh, yeah, if you wanted to uh, load a flight plan, it'll let you do that. You can see a flight plan loader. I've got a uh, Sacramento to LAX one here made from a website. So you can load whatever flight plan you want. But so that's that sort of thing. There's a payload manager. And um, for now, we'll keep the 87 passengers. At, one, at some point, I want to see what the maximum possible range with the Concorde is. But we'll do that in a different video. So ground power on. We have to use the graphic user interface, aircraft, door, and ground. Click uh, GPU available. So that's that. Uh, main batteries are over. I really need the checklist over here, maybe. Okay. Here's the batteries. Battery on, battery on. And it's good to have the startup manual for the plane open at the same time just so that you have pictures of where everything is like equipment bay cooling not the most obvious thing but uh, I'm gonna set uh, it to auto and normal um, I don't know whether rear extract needs to be on or off it just says check or set uh, I figure setting it to auto is safe but um, oxygen panel the oxygen panel is all the way down here And it seems to be okay. Okay, so drain mast heaters. Well, that's on the front panel overhead. Drain mast heaters, there they are. I don't know what check or set means, but I'll turn them on. Why not? Heat is good. All right, the INS is back over at the engineer panel. And they're down here. So INS uh, align, or uh, well, standby first, but then whoop, align. And then they should show ready. So they're aligning now. Air data computers on. On. We would check emergency equipment and then the no smoking sign. Here's the no smoking and fasten seatbelt. Okay. So circuit breakers, we will assume checked. Uh, cockpit preparation complete. Oxygen checked. Windows closed. <laughs> so there's the flight control augmentation and safety systems and power flight control circuits. 
we're just going to turn all these on. Uh, eventually it'll tell us to turn on artificial feel and all this, but... Just going to go through. Uh, these, these are set up fine, I believe. Anti-stall systems on, though. We've got the instrument transfer settings. The rad ins button is this one, and it should be on rad and already is. And then altimeter is checked. I think this location is a little bit below ground, but I'm gonna set it to oops, set it to zero. Right now, make sure the co-pilot is also set to the same. So com one is on. That is fine. I'm not gonna set the nav radios this time. I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm gonna be antisocial. Nav lights on. Okay, throttle masters. Main or alternate? Um, they seem to be on main right now. That's fine. Back to the engineer panel. Ground hydraulics. Check out yell or yell off. Move closer. Uh, yellow, yellow. That's what we want. Fuel heaters are on or auto, 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 auto. Uh, engine recircular recirculation valves are shut. That appears to be correct. Secondary doors uh, will say take off with reheat, so auto. So yeah, before engines start, we would uh, check all the ready for nav stuff. We'd also check all the bugs now, set the clock. I'm going to leave that. Briefing, stay a load sheet. Uh, Anti-collision lights. I'll do what I can do here on master warning test. That is here. Sounds like it's a good test. Thralls are on idle. We would in theory have gotten clearance. And I'm going to get the engine feed pumps on. Okay, and we're going to start at the gate. Uh, I think now you only need to start one engine at the gate and then the bleed air can feed the rest so you can back off and then start the rest. But I'll just start all of them at the gate. So, bleed air source available. It is available. Cross bleed. Open, 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 open. Uh, I think we should have these open, but I'm not sure. I'm going to flick those open and remember to close them later. Okay, so, engine bleed air valve open. I think that's the top bit. Let me double check. Yes, those top ones are the bleed air valves that need to be open. Okay, so did it properly. Engine Debo. Um, well, I never know whether I've been engine off for more than four hours or not. <laughs> so, uh, the engine Debo switch. I'm going to go ahead and say that we've been off for more than four hours, less than four hours? No, more than four hours. All right, so normal. Okay, so that is done. Start valve switches. Well, they're right here. So we are going to start the engines. I'm going to... I'm just wondering if I've forgotten something. Well, we'll find out. I'm gonna start engine 2 first, and I'm gonna go 2314, I believe. Oh, I'm going to go with 2314. So start. And we should see activity on the N2 indicator. N2 RPM greater than 12%. We need to click that. Okay, 
that uh, warning light is off. That has to turn off by the time we're at 30% on the N2, otherwise there could be a fire. <laughs> so, all good. Once the N2 RPM is 67%, we'll go to engine 3. And our, our INS is ready now. It's all green. So, starting engine 3. Start. Okay, good times. And engine 1. Yeah, I think I'm doing this a little bit wrong. I should be... I'm so excited by the engines coming on that I'm not uh, doing the conditioning valve and the hydraulic pump, electric generator, and all that business. But anyway, uh, we will get engine 4 on and then do all that. So engine 4 on. Okay, so conditioning valves on, 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 on. The engine driven hydraulic pumps are over here. And we want on, 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 on. And then the electric generators are down below here electrical generating control. And we want up, not test. Well, I guess it's always test on, test on, test on, test on. Okay. So they all seem fine. Uh, they're flicking to their position, but I guess that's all right for the time being. Um, and then engine bleed air valves shut. And cross feeds shut. And again, this would, would apparently be done engine by engine, though we would use the engine bleed air to feed the other engines. So uh, it depends. Okay, so but our engines should all be reading good and even they are okay so other before pushback items we've got the emergency hydraulic generator here and we need to set grid bypass um, I think it already was Oop. oh no it was on auto okay SSB switch SSB closed the galley heat Water, gen uh, water heaters on. These are the galleys on, on. Okay, then taxi lights inform ground. And then we can uh, get all connected up for the pushback. So, okay, so taxi lights on, on. Um, I'm gonna set windshield de ice to low right now. Uh, of course, we have a flight engineer that handles changes that need to be made along the way. In particular to the fuel balance so if uh, you take a look at the graphic user interface as a flight engineer and the flight engineer is managing the panel during the flight and will actually shift the fuel around in the tanks as appropriate to manage the center of gravity unless you want to do that manually which I don't so uh, the, you'll hear occasionally even when you're not doing something a flick in the back here and that's because the flight engineer is actually making changes here between the you know shifting fuels around and opening certain valves and closing others, so that's interesting. We have automatic management of such things, and we are going to not put the nose down just yet because the little truck is gonna get clipped into it. So, uh, the pre-planned pushback. I'm not actually going to be using the navigation system to any great degree. So just a warning, but I think I will attempt to use the autopilot and we will see how the autopilot does. I don't think I did that in the previous video. How's it going to do? Oh no, it's going to hit the thingamajig. Oh. Well, let's see if we hit that plane over there. Uh, no, wait. It's maneuvering this way. One thing I would like to do is try to fly a polar circumnavigation, but I don't know if it has the range for that. To cross from Cape Horn to New Zealand is like 5,000 nautical miles if you want to fly over the pole. If you want to sort of skip the pole, but still sort of do a north-south circumnavigation, it's possible. That's a little bit easier. 
but if you actually want to overfly the south pole, it's a little bit harder. Okay, disconnect. Alright, uh, let's begin the taxi. And we can uh, get the nose down. That is this handle over here. Let me just zoom in on that, because... I want to make that clear. Okay, I'll take an outside view for the taxiing. Though this is pretty smooth and nice. I think they improved on the frame rates, or it might be just the new graphics card. I sure picked a tight spot to be in. It might be a long trip to the runway, I don't know. Oh, I guess not, maybe not. It's right there. SFO is a pretty busy scenery area here. I've got the freeware Mr. X6 package for SFO. So, uh, so far our performance is really good. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll scoot you a little bit forward and get lined up a little bit better. There we go, that's good enough. Yeah, look at that airport. That's a pretty good sight. Okay, I don't know whether to... We'll get the throttle up in here and the rest outside, maybe. I don't want to bang the tail and it's best to take a look at that. So, throttle up. We are not on reheat right now. Those lights come on when we're on reheat. But I'm actually going to keep it off of reheat, actually. I've reconsidered. So, uh, exterior view. And let's see how it does. Breaks off. Don't bonk the tail. Okay. Gear up. And I need to get back into the cockpit to get the nose up. I don't have this on something. But she probably should. Now, if you're flying it, you probably want to use the reheat and then climb quickly and accelerate, but I think this is alright. So, uh, GMT, well, we can see the elapsed time. We're at 36 minutes after I uh, initiated the batteries, so. The flight engineer told me about the fuel status. Um, I'm gonna trim for flight. So he knows what to do there. And we are climbing. Let's take a look at the outside view. Very nice, there's San Francisco. Um, I feel like... Um, uh, that's too much. Wanted to sort of recenter the view here. I'm very pleased by how this is looking. It's uh, certainly going to be more scenic than a transatlantic flight, that's for sure. So we're going to see a whole lot of locations from 55,000 feet. Not exactly the best sort of 
sightseeing deal, but does have the benefit of having the Concord in the shot. <laughs> well, that's a sight. There's the Delta. Uh, that down there is Travis Air Force Base. And the city of Fairfield. I'm gonna push the subsonic speed here and then we're gonna break the sound barrier. So the one to level out. So that's Sacramento in front of us. Okay. Let's see the dials. Mach 1.09 already. We don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the afterburner, of course. Getting plenty of lift. We need to manage the speed, though, because you can see the red line on the Mach meter there. I say red line, I mean, you know, the, the overspeed line. This is the transonic region, there's a lot of drag here. Once we get past Mach 1.3, it'll be better. You'll notice that if you aren't at 37... Yeah, if you're at uh, less than 37,000 feet, you can't really get past Mach 1.3 without going over speed. And you heard the flight engineer uh, talk about the ramps moving at uh, Mach 1.3. So there's all indicative of it being a significant threshold. On the timer here, the elapse is the flight elapsed time from when we started the batteries. The chrono is how long we've been on the afterburners, so 2 minutes and 20 seconds. And the heading, I'm gonna set to our current heading. Murdering options set too high. That happens. Okay... Need to manage speeds here. Uh, it's gonna tell me I'm over speed. Uh, I've done it bad again. Well, I need more practice in the plane. That's it's not the smoothest flight for our passengers here. Well, let's help it out by going to autopilot and we're gonna altitude acquisition. It's a little bit wobbly, but okay. And auto throttle. Uh, indicated airspeed acquisition. Okay, it's turned on the afterburners. Well, I want to see whether it levels out or not, but we're passing by Lake Tahoe. Okay, it looks like it's acquiring the altitude properly. It'll go over a bit, but adjust. So that part's fine. We're at Mach 1.7, and it's turned off the afterburners. Getting longer on it than I would have liked. I need more practice. I suggest reheat on. Reheat? Oh, well. Uh, I turned it on again. Okay, I'm gonna set the all throttle a little bit lower. So let's make sure it t turns them off. Okay, but our altitude is fine. I need to uh, wonder about why the heading hold isn't doing what I think it's supposed to do. Okay, so the button I wanted was actually this trek heading instead of the heading hold button. Fair enough. Okay, things look stable, much much more stable than they would be in my own hands. Afterburners off, we're accelerating smoothly, Mach 1.8 right now. And we are over Nevada. 
That's a nice view of Pyramid Lake. Okay, and once we get to uh, 400 knots, we can reinitiate the auto throttle. We're at Mach 2 now, and that's 400 knots. Hopefully it'll just hold 400. Okay, acquire 400 knots. Don't do afterburner. Okay, so we are 28 minutes after I noted the takeoff elapsed time of 36 minutes, so... Already the SR-71 would be halfway across the country, alas. We're basically following uh, Interstate 80 right now. We're flying past uh, Battle Mountain, Nevada. That's that town right under us there. You can see from the numbers in the upper left corner that the autopilot is doing an excellent job holding the specified speed and altitude. Just to be clear if uh, you're not aware already, uh, this is not the default scenery, scenery for X-Plane 11. This is Ortho 4XP photo scenery. Um, Available for free if you use the Ortho4XP program to get it. Okay, we are crossing into Utah and we see the very prominent salt flats. Well, there's the Great Salt Lake. Unfortunately, the upper portion seems to have been taken a different time than the lower portion. We'll just focus on the southerly side with Salt Lake City tucked in the midst of the mountains there. You can see quite a large chunk of Utah from this view. But yeah, I need to like avoid those little blue areas where it's not quite rendering things. I mean, I don't blame it. It's a little bit tough right now for for the system, the speed at which we're going and at this height and the level of detail of the terrain. You can sort of see Salt Lake City Airport there. Denver is not really on our flight path, but who cares, I'm going to Denver anyway. We're going to turn a little bit. This is why I didn't want to go with a particular flight plan really anyway. Because I was bound to change it. This is the Ashley National Forest that we're flying over now. Very varied landscape. Uh, unfortunately some of the clouds are baked into the texture there. Okay, we are now over Colorado. There's the blueness up front. Maybe if I focus the camera up front, it'll eventually render that part. I'm sure the scenery's there, it just doesn't want to show it to me. It's being annoying. From this altitude, it uh, all looks a lot less rugged. There we go, it's rendered. So, I usually don't use the INS system, so I didn't bother to do anything with it, but of course, you do have to set it to nav. I saw a comment on the previous video that I didn't do that, and of course I, I didn't do that again because I wasn't using the INS system anyway. Well, there's Denver, but then it's not rendering this part of Denver. I'm actually having to pause the game so that it renders Denver. I think we'll go with this. Still got a blue block up there, but here's Denver. I just needed to give it some time. We're going too fast. At regular airliner speeds, there'd be no problems, but... See, that's why they prevented the Concorde from flying over ground. It wasn't anything to do with, with the noise or anything. It was because uh, the ground wouldn't render in time. Few people know that. 
Okay, we have to go a little bit further north now. I deviated south for this. I want to hit Chicago next. Still cruising at Mach 2, no problems. 38 tons of fuel. I'm interested in the fuel usage. Because I do want to see what the absolute maximum distance we can fly with this is. It says our range estimate is 1,400 nautical miles. And that's fine, given that we've passed Denver. No blueness in sight because, uh, of course, it had uh, trouble rendering Denver, which is a scenery intensive area. Uh, this area, not so much. No offense to it. In fact, uh, we could do with some smoother rendering at this point. Hmm. I think. I don't know if this is dusty or if it's because of the sun angle. Maybe I should have uh, done this flight a little bit earlier. Sun's looking somewhat low and uh, we've got haze on the ground because of that. But I don't know whether uh, the discoloration on the ground is like dust or because of the sun. Maybe because of the sun. Let's check the cockpit. Uh, 34 tons of fuel left. We are currently over uh, Nebraska. Uh, right smack dab in the center of it. Uh, still a ways from Lincoln and Omaha. Pointed more towards Lincoln. Everything is perfectly stable. We're getting sort of a halo effect now, like right around the spot that we're we're over. Well, not quite. Yeah, that, that's probably the sun. Well, uh, just for sightseeing purposes, I think it'd be better if we didn't have this effect. So I'm gonna reverse time somewhat. We're still using real world weather. But I would like, as we do some sightseeing at 55,000 feet, that we can see things properly. So, yep, time reversal initiated. Now that won't affect the chronometer inside. We're still interested in the elapsed time. And so far, we are one hour and ten minutes in. Still over Nebraska. You can see a city to our right there. That is Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, this that we're flying over right now is Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, we are passing Des Moines now. And I wish I could get the camera a little bit. There we go. That is Des Moines, Iowa. I just looked up how long it took for Concord to refuel and it looks like 20 minutes. That's got to be important if I do a try and break a circumnavigation record. Let me look up what the circumnavigation record is for an airplane. Okay, so it looks like the record for circumnavigation, which is held by the Concorde, is 31 hours, 27 minutes, and 49 seconds. This is, of course, not including spacecraft. Um, I would like... that didn't include an equ equatorial crossing but um, it would be the required distance. So 31 hours. Passing by Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And Iowa City is down the way there. I keep having to move time, but I think the sun angle is pretty bad right now. Let's watch the sun rise backwards. I think maybe I've got the date set bad. It's not... The sun's arc is not very... It, I think it's too wintry. I think I've got the date set wrong. It should be a little bit more... Norverly. So it takes 20 minutes to refuel the Concorde, but I wonder what people would think is a legitimate downtime for the Concorde in between flights on a around-the-world escapade. Should I take a little bit longer? I mean, of course, there'll be taxiing and all that business involved as well. But as far as uh, parked, 
Uh, I've got some pretty intense scenery at uh, Chicago and the simulator's feeling it. I'm gonna use this plugin to tune things down a little bit. I think it's loaded most of it. Maybe, maybe it'll be okay. Oh, I can see Chicago down there. I don't know how good a sight of it we're gonna get from this altitude and with all the clouds. You can very definitely see Meg's Field. Buildings look so small from here. Really, really small. But there it is. New York is bound to be quite intense too, but we'll be going slower by then. Okay, at the moment we're headed roughly towards Toledo. And we are just crossing into Ohio right now. But it's all cloudy now, so not a whole lot to see here. Okay, we're just skirting along here. The clouds are flying on by and we are basically over Lake Erie approaching Cleveland. We are currently over Pennsylvania. And we need to be a little bit further south for New York. And to be honest, we should probably be descending right now. Let's check on the fuel situation though. Um, status. We need to burn off about five more tons. Okay. Autopilot to descend. Um, I'm presetting the auto throttle, but we're not actually going to throttle down to 360 knots yet. It'll just keep it to 400, and as we descend, it'll manage that. What we will do is do altitude acquisition to 45,000 uh, 45, feet. Well, I don't know... Uh, what it's doing, but we can set the vertical speed here. There's a slider right next to the vertical speed indicator, right? I, uh, yeah, so on the left side, the little white notch is the vertical speed setting. So I'm just going to manually set that right now for the autopilot to follow. So we are descending, but because of our sheer speed, you wouldn't notice from the flight profile, really. Probably if uh, the Concorde looks like it's descending, that's rather a bad thing. Well, unless it's going much slower than this. At Mach 2 or close to Mach 2, it probably shouldn't look like it's descending too much. I probably started descent a little bit too early. But that might help the New York scenery to load in, which is among the most intense scenery imaginable. Checking on the fuel. We're just uh, 2.4 tons too heavy. I think we'll be okay. We are two hours into the flight now. A hundred and three nautical miles away from JFK International. Okay, I'm gonna tell it to break below Mach 1 now. We're going to normal, normal airliner altitudes and speeds. Okay, we are now over New Jersey. Um... Not so you'd notice much, but there we are. We're probably gonna circle around New York a bit in order to lose speed and altitude before we land. 
somewhere directly up ahead is Manhattan. Very low on memory. Seeing loading is now disabled. Oh no. It's given up? Uh, maybe this flight has been too taxing for it. Totally out of memory. Oh no! So close! It ran totally out of memory. Oh my god. Well, that's a shame. Ah, uh, the game crashed. Well, sorry about the anticlimax there, but I decided it was a good enough flight to post up till that point. Uh, I will try to post more Concord videos in the future that have the scenery settings tuned a little bit more appropriately for the speed of the plane and the, if I'm going over a whole lot of intense scenery areas, but uh, that's for later. Uh, I think a regular airliner would have done just fine and wouldn't have caused a memory issue. Uh, considering I have 32 gigs of RAM and 8 gigs of video memory. But yeah, in this case, it was just, just not emptying the scenery out of memory quickly enough to load the new scenery. I guess that's the problem. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.